In 1949, after four centuries of control, Holland surrendered its colonies in Southeast Asia. 200 cultures spread across 13,000 islands, which had comprised the Dutch East Indies, now became Indonesia. Today, Indonesia has the fifth largest population in the world. On December 7, 1975, the Indonesian military invaded East Timor, which had been a Portuguese colony for 400 years. They fired from air, from sea, from earth, bombs, bombs from from uh, warships near Ataurua, huh? from ship to foot, the fire, fire bombs on Dili, on Dili and uh, his outskirts, in order to kill everything, every what they, they find. Oh, that, that was a massacre. Uh, so it was really. Uh, it begins with a, ma a massacre, slaughter, step. The mountainous island of Timor lies 600 kilometers north of Australia. West Timor, a former Dutch colony, was annexed by Indonesia in 1949. After a brief civil war between the two nationalist parties, the Democratic Republic of East Timor was proclaimed. The governing party, the Revolutionary Front for an Independent East Timor, Fredolin, sought peaceful relations with Indonesia. The Indonesian government, weary of separatist movements in its territories, felt threatened by the example of a small independent nation on its doorstep. The ensuing invasion has claimed over 200,000 Timorese lives and continues to this day. The U.S. and Canada, and in fact the West generally, has ignored the situation in East Timor in part. It hasn't ignored it totally. So, for example, the United States, uh, England, and other countries have been very pleased to uh, send arms to Indonesia. It's profitable and it helps them consummate the massacre. They've been interested in this sense. Uh, but the actual ongoing slaughter itself has been of no concern to the West, except that they want it to be consummated efficiently and effectively, uh, and they would like to see uh, East Timor integrated into Indonesia. Why uh, this uh, uh, attitude towards uh, uh, a slaughter, uh, one of the major slaughters of the modern period, in fact, relative to size, probably the major, major slaughter uh, since uh, the Second World War. Well, the answer to that question uh, goes back to the, uh, uh, really, uh, it leads us to broader um, geopolitical uh, uh, considerations and historical considerations. We have to really go back to the end of the Second World War. Uh, after the Second World War, as the United States was essentially organizing a world system that it intended to dominate and assigning each area its proper role, uh, the uh, Southeast Asia, including Indonesia, uh, was, if you look at the secret documents now declassified, you find that Southeast Asia was assigned a specific function. It was to fulfill its function, as the State Department put it. It was to fulfill its function as a source of raw materials uh, and uh, uh, resources uh, for uh, the industrial West. Canada is involved in Indonesia because it's a particularly good place to go if you want no unions to worry about workers who are treated very badly, workers whom you don't have to pay a great deal of money to, and an army to back up a no-strike situation. Uh, what happened in 1965 was that there was a right-wing coup which was headed by General Suharto, who has ever since been the president of Indonesia. Uh, in the aftermath of the coup, at least, according to CIA statistics, 700,000 people were killed. The estimate actually goes above uh, 1 million if you go to Amnesty International. 
In the aftermath of that, naturally the population was terrorized, all the uh, effective unions were smashed, and it became a perfect investment climate for countries like Canada. I would like to draw honorable members' attention to the presence in the gallery today of His Excellency Dr. Mokhtar Kusamadamadja, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia. Honorable Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Mr. Speaker, the Secretary of State for External Affairs knows that Canada has allotted $300 million in aid through CETA to uh, Indonesia over a five-year period. Uh, and in fact, that represents the fourth largest Canadian uh, program of aid in all of Asia. How can this government continue to ignore the fact that Indonesia has invaded East Timor with 40,000 troops and is conducting Operation Extinction, which is tantamount to genocide. What kind of representations will this Secretary of State of Canada for Foreign Affairs make to the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Dr. Mokhtar, who is in fact right here in Ottawa at the present time? Mr. Speaker. I trust that the Right Honourable Leader of the Opposition is embarrassed by this kind of grandstanding. <laughs> here, here. He says, he says he isn't, Mr. Speaker, which speaks volumes of his judgment. Here, here. The Honourable Member is, the Honourable Member, the Honourable Member is uh, considerably out of date with his uh, accusations with regard to uh, East Timor. I have, in fact, discussed the matter with uh, Dr. Mokhtar during my visit to Indonesia in 1985. Uh, at our suggestion, the uh, Canadian ambassador in, uh, in Indonesia was, uh, uh, was invited to uh, visit East Timor to see conditions for himself. He believes that the uh, arguments that have been made by various groups uh, are exaggerated. I'm sure that I speak for the government of Indonesia in indicating that they would be, pre that they would be prepared that they would be prepared to uh, welcome that they would be prepared to welcome the Honourable Member uh, to come and see for himself. That would be a change in the basis of his representations in this House if they were based on fact. What in fact happened, just the essence of it, uh, is that in uh, 1975 the Indonesian government attacked the neighbouring uh, island of Timor, East Timor, which had been a Portuguese colony. Uh, they had never laid any claim to it, had no claim to it, nor did any uh, international, uh, uh, is there any basis in international law or elsewhere for such a claim. Uh, in the course of this attack, which uh, uh, has now been going on for 12 years, uh, in, in the first stages of it, there was in fact a very large scale massacre. Uh, by 1977, the Indonesian army had actually run out of arms, uh, depleted its arms supplies in uh, the course of this uh, aggression. The Carter administration at that point it took a little time off from its uh, uh, passionate uh, rhetoric about uh, its concern for human rights uh, so as to uh, significantly ex uh, escalate the arms flow to Indonesia to enable it to consummate the slaughter. The major uh, massacres in which perhaps several hundred thousand people were killed out of a population of 700,000 initially uh, they took place after the, um, the Carter administration uh, increased the arms flow to uh, uh, Indonesia with the conscious knowledge that this would be the consequence. Uh, that's when the, uh, pop what, with the remnants of the population which had fled to the hills were driven down to Indonesian-run concentration camps uh, and so on. Meanwhile, uh, Canada was also, uh, the, the Canadian media, for example, were totally silent about all of this. The Canadian government has simply endorsed, officially endorsed, uh, the most ludicrous uh, Indonesian propaganda about the uh, uh, Timorese uh, requesting uh, uh, Indonesia to uh, intervene, to annex them to Indonesia and so on. Uh, and meanwhile, of course, uh, Canadian corporations are enriching themselves by not in Timor, which is too small to be of interest to them, but in Indonesia, uh, where uh, Canada is the major uh, a Western investor and therefore extremely supportive of uh, Indonesian atrocities, uh, aggression and brutality.
You kill a lot of them recently? Oh no, no, no. We 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 never kill him because they are our family, our family, like the other family uh, in 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 the other part of Indonesia. All of the people in right here is our family, so we do not kill him. Of course not. Brutal murders by Indonesian troops have silenced many voices of opposition. Fearing for the safety of relatives still in East Timor, refugees can only speak out under conditions of anonymity. I have been beaten too. And my friends, some of my, uh, some, some are my friends have been, um, they have been put them into the, into the tank full of water. And then they obliged it, they forced it. My, my these friends to be under the water as long as they want, and when the, my when these friends resist under the water, they they try to come up on, to to come up of the water to breathe, and then they 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 hit with the with the butt of the gun, or or they they or they beat them with the with rods. And after that, they 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 burn these friends with cigarettes. The people of East Timor are inhabitants of the island for thousands of years. Before the invasion, 1975, there were about 700,000 people, most of which were Melanesian, dark skin, much more related to the people of Papua New Guinea and other peoples of South Pacific region, then to the Polynesian people, Malaysian people of Indonesia and the rest of Asia. The people of East Timor used to live uh, in the mountain region. About 90% were subsistence farmers who tend their land for centuries. And uh, they lived peacefully. There was never starvation or shortage of food because majority of the population were subsistence farmers. East Timor is uh, potentially uh, very rich in agriculture. It produced uh, rice, corn, peanuts, and every kind of uh, uh, tropical fruit. And uh, the coastal area is extremely rich in fish. There is a lot of uh, wildlife in the country which uh, people uh, can live on. Well, people uh, often ask the question why we should care about a uh, tiny, uh, isolated, remote place such as East Timor, which they've never heard about. Uh, and it's, uh, in a way, a curious kind of question. I mean, there's a more general question, namely, why should we care about uh, being involved in uh, genocide or mass slaughter? Why should, it, why, why should Germans care about the uh, uh, slaughter of the Jews? Why should Russians care about the massacre of Afghans? Uh, why should we care about the people of East Timor? It's essentially the same question. Uh, the facts of the matter are that we are engaged, uh, our governments are engaged, and to the extent that we think we're responsible for the actions of our governments, we're engaged uh, in uh, a, a large-scale uh, mass slaughter, uh, to which the word genocide is not inappropriate, uh, in East Timor, and we have been so since 1975. So if we're concerned about uh, our bloody hands, uh, then we should be uh, concerned about East Timor. If, on the other hand, we think that the uh, slaughter of people who get in our way is perfectly fine, not a problem, uh, uh, that our main goals are to enrich ourselves uh, and uh, crush anyone who happens to be in our path, uh, then, of course, there's no reason at all for us to be concerned about East Timor except to applaud the successes of uh, the United States and Canada and other countries in uh, facilitating uh, and uh, providing the requisite diplomatic and military support uh, for uh, uh, this, for the Indonesian attack.